Welcome to Partnership Bliss with Relationship Navigation Specialist, Kimmy Avery. In her program each week, Kimmy provides the keys to blissful partnership so that you can navigate your relationship amazingly well and enjoy a foundation of peace, joy, and harmony that frees you to love open-heartedly and thrive in your life. Now, here's your host, Kimmy Avery. Hello and welcome. I'm Kimmy Avery, Relationship Navigation Specialist and hostess of the Partnership Bliss Podcast. I'm about freeing your heart so that you can love openly and enjoy love in your life. I want you to be able to love with intention. So every single day you're opening your heart more and more. The purpose of this podcast is to bring you keys for creating blissful partnership. I'll be sharing essential tools, mindset upgrades, and interviewing amazing people, all in service of helping you to successfully navigate your relationship or your would-be relationship or your family relationships or your business relationships. My goal is to help you turn relationship challenges around and turn your life into a blissful exploration of what possibilities you can bring to the world. Today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Michelle Petacalis, who is a national speaker and expert on emotional wounding and unresolved grief. She has a PhD in sociology and 18 years of coaching. She has produced an award-winning award-winning three-part documentary called Secrets of Life and Death and is a featured author of the soon-to-be-released anthology called Breaking Barriers. Please help me welcome Dr. Michelle Petacalis. I'm so glad you're here with me. And, um, you know, we're also really good friends, and we do Mastermind together, and it's just a really fabulous thing to have you on the podcast with me. I feel very honored for you to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Kim. Yeah, you're welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about what it's like when we're faced with life's disappointments and we're taught to be strong, keep our stiff upper lip, and to get on with things, and how tamping down those emotions actually blocks your energy and diminishes your vitality and can hurt your performance and your relationships. So, when approached with the awareness and compassion, those life challenges can be turned around and can make things that have been difficult become a gateway to a new and more satisfying way, satisfying way of loving. So I'm super excited to be talking about this with you. And how do you see that emotions when they're trapped affects your relationships? Well, the first thing is that when emotions are trapped, it actually takes effort on the part of the body to keep those emotions trapped inside. And so when we're tamping down our feelings, it's really hard for us to be present with another person. Mm -hmm. I know this was true in in my situation, in my biography. For years and years, I had tamped down my emotions and I actually lost my first husband. And I'm sure it's because I was unable to access my feelings at a very deep level. Yeah, I, I think that we often get this idea that putting, like actually sharing our feelings and emotions, we've been shamed for it a lot. So there's also a, a need to put it down because of that too. Keep it together. Don't let anybody know you're hurting. And I think not having a good outlet or a coach to support you in releasing that can be a really big problem. It's hard to even know where to begin if you don't have some sort of support, some sort of guidance, because all your training, all your um, experiences up until that point is to keep your body safe. There's actually a a natural, um, well, a well-rooted mechanism that, that occurs in the body over time to protect the, the human body, the, that social animal that we all are from pain and being rejected by another person is very, very scary. It's very upsetting. 
Yeah. In fact, I think one of our biggest fears is that experience of rejection. Absolutely. And if we're rejected by our primary caregivers, that's like the first stage in it. And then we become afraid of it in all other areas of our lives. Yes, that's true. We become afraid of intimacy. If we're rejected in our relationships with our parents in any way for not being what they want, if we're too emotional and they reject us, then we learn to tamp down our emotions. Or if they don't respond, then we tamp down our emotions because yeah. it takes you know a lot of effort to be emotional. Yeah. And so we learn those habits and they become deeply rooted in our, in our whole physiological system. Yeah. And so changing does need some sort of intervention from the outside. It's going to be very hard to change it without that. Absolutely. And one of the things I like to say to everybody is that you can't see your blind spots. You can't see that because you're inside the situation. So having somebody support you, whether it's for me with working with your relationship or dealing with emotions that are keeping you from shining your brilliance, having somebody looking on the outside who can give you the right tweaks to help change that can be incredibly transformative. Um, I agree. Yeah. So I would like you to explain a little bit more about how the body alerts us to our own emotional wounding and what we like what to look for because sometimes people don't even know they're so out of touch with their emotions they can't even hear the signals right so our body is our friend our body really is communicating with us all the time but basically the body has sort of two ways of saying something and it's either pleasure you feel good or pain you feel bad Body uses pain when it is trying to tell us that things are out of alignment, that things are not functioning properly. Or it uses fear when, uh, when we're in a situation that may be um, life-threatening. So those are kind of the basic rudimentary communications that the body will give us. And if we have tamped down our emotions for so long, we may not even be aware of the subtler signals that the body is giving us. And so the body has to ramp it up. It has to make it louder. Yeah. Also, when we tamp things down, it actually takes muscular energy to hold the emotions in. It, it literally, it's like you're right. holding back. You know, if you're holding your heart or protecting your heart, there's actually a muscular structure that happens in the body. And over time, that tensing, that holding prevents the fluids in your body from flowing properly. And so sure. things don't get in the right place. Not to mention that your muscles and your, and your skeleton structure gets weird uh, from holding in that way. And so eventually, as you get older, it starts to cause pain. The, right. the improper well, alignment of the body, it starts to affect how you well, feel. And what you just said is kind of interesting because you've got that holding and then you've also got, in my work, sometimes I, I'll communicate with parts of the person that are causing physical symptoms. And it's sort of like the part gets louder and louder and louder. It's sort of like a knocking to get out. Hey, help me, help me, help me. And so there's a distinction between here's the cause of that tightness because I've been twisted and contorted because of the holding. And here's the actual message. And do you have any um, guidance on how to get that actual message from your body? Well, if you look at your body and the symbolic meanings of different parts of your body, that will give you some indication. And then, of course, there's the whole uh, chakra system that, uh, that came out of India, which also can give you a clue to what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, fluids in your body have to do with emotion. So if there's something that's wrong with the fluids of your, your body, if you're having some sort of blood ailment, that may have something to do with uh, not being able to release the emotions. Mm. Uh, whereas skeleton has to do more with structure and grounding and, you know, the whole 
uh, foundation of things. But then there are, as I said, there are the chakra systems. So for example, the heart chakra would have to do with uh, issues around um, feelings and love. Mm. Whereas the uh, solar plexus has to do with how you stand up in the world. And so if you have tension or tightness there, it may have something to do with how you're showing up in the world. Are you really um, moving forward uh, in a powerful way? And then the throat, this is really interesting. So the throat has to do with expression, how you express yourself. So if there's, uh, you know, tension in the throat, if you have a stiff neck, that might be an indication that you're not speaking your truth, that you're not uh, allowing uh, the true voice inside of you to get out. So you see that, you see how it works, that if you understand what the function of the parts of the body are, that gives you an indication of what the body's telling you. Sure. Yeah. I remember years ago, I um, was dating a guy who really wasn't a match for me. And he seemed, he looked good on paper, right? And I developed TMJ symptoms. My jaw mm. was really, really tight. Mm -hmm. And we dated for about five months and I couldn't you know, I was going along with it, didn't really feel particularly sexually aroused by him or anything, mm. but it, he looked good on paper. Mm -hmm. good business owner, smart guy, nice mm -hmm. to be with, all that kind of stuff. And then there was one day where uh, we had lost one of my mom's dogs and I was, we were driving all over Boulder Creek looking for this dog. And Robin says to me, oh, Kimmy, I know you're worried, or oh, baby, I'm wor I know you're worried about your puppy dog, or something like that, and the way he said it was so condescending. Mm. I realized that for those five months, I had built up like this tightness in my jaw, and I had, I had tried different pillows and exercises and all these things. I'd never had that symptom before, and I broke up with him the very next day after he said the thing about the dog, and the symptoms were gone. Look it at that. Evaporated. Yes, that's great. That's great. Yes. Well, yeah. and so you think that part of the reason why the jaw gets tight like that is that you're literally biting back your words. Yeah. So if we can learn to listen to our body and notice, especially that intuition about this person is not right for me, or this person is perfect for me, but learning to listen to your body. Now, I have to say, for years, I was I lived in my head and then I got into spiritual work and then I lived up in the ether mm -hmm. and it would take me sometimes a week to know that my feelings were hurt mm -hmm. I just didn't even register it it was like oh I'll just go around and then finally it would like oh uh, that didn't feel good yeah so it takes practice and it helps to to get feedback and mm -hmm. and to to learn to check in with your body well, and I also think um, some of my clients I've had to give, and I, well, when I was given, when I first started therapy, I was given a list of emotions. Mm -hmm. There were, I had no distinctions between good and bad. Like mm -hmm. that was all I knew. Mm -hmm. And then I had to learn the nuances of my emotions. And I recently gave a list and i've done this a number of times with clients to be able to know and identify what they're experiencing because if it's a foreign place to go to they have no idea what where even to look or what those nuances are oftentimes when i'm working with a new client they do not have the vocabulary either for what's going on or or even know how to interpret what's going on and so they will say well i guess i feel good but they they don't really know what's going on in their body. So I actually teach them how to breathe and to do this body scan so that they can start to identify areas of their body in which there is tension or blocking or some dis-ease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And I, so I think that you're about to, I want to ask you about the negative thoughts and how they yes. affect our emotions and our success. And to preface that, I, I like to look at it like, you know, there are about 950 trillion bits of information coming into our brain every day. Some of them are good experiences, some of them are bad, and we make stories based on what's happening. 
And whatever lens we have will filter out information. And, I, and I'd love to hear your um, assessment of that or your uh, understanding of that, because I think it's so incredibly powerful what we're thinking and addressing that. Well, a lot of what we're thinking, we were taught when we were children, either directly in that that's what our parents thought and they conveyed that to us and we were like sponges and we absorbed it, or through experience and a childhood brain that came up with interpretations, beliefs, and patterns to keep this body safe. Mm -hmm. Now, you, we, we're going to start with a given. It's impossible, nearly impossible, for parents to be perfect. They're either too critical or they're too um, overprotective or they're too controlling or they could be too violent or they could be too um, emotionally disturbed, any number of things. And rather than sit around and, and blame our parents, we say, okay, this is what I've been given. What can I do to change that so I can live more uh, joyfully and more happily in my life? So you just work on it. And you understand that they, where, wherever they came from, they had a biography, they had parents too. Right. But we start with these beliefs and those early beliefs have a very, very powerful effect on us. Sometimes we're not even conscious of them. They're unconscious because they've been there for so long. Right. And so it takes time to root those out. Well, and, and that's again where under, having somebody ask you the right question yes. is so powerful. Absolutely. If you are trying to do an audit by yourself, you don't know what to look for. That's right. And it's beliefs are so systemic like a belief if you imagine a fish bowl of a fish in a bowl of water that water is like the fish's belief system yes and the fish doesn't know it's what its belief system is that's just where it lives and it's the same is true for us with our thoughts and our beliefs and a belief is just a thought you keep thinking that is has created um it's routine and it's habitual in many ways. But if you can go in like what you're describing and root it out and like call it out for its illogicness, that's not a word, call it out for its unhelpful uh, experience or whatever it is, identifying it and then starting again, I think is so important. It is. It is. And uh, first, I have to say that being in a relationship is probably one of the greatest ways to root those things out. Yes. But to do that alone can be very treacherous because uh, it's hard to change those patterns on your own. So, for example, when I got involved with my second husband, I had the awareness to see how I was in the process of sabotaging the relationship. Because I was afraid of betrayal, any time I would see him pull back, I would pull back. Now, if both of us are pulling back pretty soon, we're not going to be together anymore, right? Right, yeah. So I said, you know, I really want this relationship to work. And so I, I did the early childhood healing that I needed to break that pattern, to change it. Mm -hmm. But I had to go all the way back to the early relationships where I felt betrayed, where I felt abandoned. Right. Well, and I think that's those, you said something before where our parents, they can do as much as they can to prevent what they went through as a child. And usually parents are like, okay, that sucked, or I didn't like that experience, so I'm going to do something different. Right. And they'll spend a lot of energy trying to prevent a particular experience. And then all of a sudden, the kid will come back up to them with a trauma from a completely different direction that the parent had no idea about, right. you know, <laughs> it's so. really hard to get it right. And I have to say in my own family, there wasn't, there wasn't, wasn't any abuse. There was a certain amount of neglect, Yeah. but I was the third child. That was a lot for a very young mother. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, our parents are doing the best they can with the information they Absolutely. have. And Leo Buscalia, one of my favorite authors, said, um, you know, there's a lot of peace that comes when you realize that your parents are just people, you know? Yes. Now, yes. 
that awareness is part of the story. It definitely alleviates some of the tension, some of the mm -hmm. unhappiness and some of the problem, but you still have these beliefs that are under in the sort of in the unconscious mind running the show. And if you don't do something to navigate that and to get out of that, you're going to have some chronic problems. Right. And so how would somebody know that they've got beliefs running the show that need to be addressed by you? They have a hard time staying in a relationship would be one thing, or they have a hard time um, having joy in their lives. Uh, I mean, we're talking about relationships, so I'm going to uh, mention that, but if they keep on uh, running into problems, first of all, attracting the wrong kinds of uh, partners, that's a good sign, because oftentimes what we do is we will attract our mothers or our fathers or, you know, uh, replacements for them because right. we're trying to heal that uh, original pattern. Mm -hmm. And, and so in a way that's perfect because it will trigger those patterns. But if we allow ourselves to stay in that triggered place, then of course the relationship's not going to survive. Sure. What I would love to hear from you is one of your success stories, a story where like you had an amazing transformation for a client. Great. I would love to share a story. So I, one of my more recent clients, she was having difficulty with her sisters. They had, they had aging parents and she had put them into assisted living. They were having some dementia and her sisters actually took them out of there. And one of them wanted to take them off to New York to get some sort of, I don't know, surgery. And, and so there was a lot of conflict. And then her sisters were actually isolating her. Oh, no. She came to me and she was, yeah, she was like really upset. And, and what we found out in working together was that when she was young, her parents were very dysfunctional and she went into controlling mode. She was the oldest. And so that pattern of controlling things actually irritated her sisters. And that mm. was why they were sabotaging her. What I got her to do was to focus on what she's really here meant to be doing. What happens is in childhood, our, our real gifts, our brilliance is tamped down because we're so busy trying to survive. Mm -hmm. In her case, she was actually a psychic healer. She really tamped that down because her parents were not interested in anything weird and woo-woo like that. But I invited her to connect with that part of herself and to really feed that. And then I also helped her to, when she was dealing with her parents, to make sure she protected her inner child, that little girl who was fearful of getting rejected or being hurt by her parents. And so when she created those um, boundaries, when she created that safe place for her child, she was able to step up more powerfully in the situation and also not to let, not to let it get, in, uh, get her upset. And then the third thing, so you can see what, I, what I'm doing. One is she's working on what she really cares about. So this is really uplifting her and making sure. her feel great. Two, I'm helping her protect her body. And three, I invited her to change the story. So her story was, oh, how mean my sisters are. And I told her, I invited her to think about it as her family is her training ground, that they are her teachers. Yep. And that as a healer, she's going to be running into a lot of difficult people out there. So if she learns how to deal with her parents and her, and her siblings, she'll be so much ahead of the game. That's a great, great example. Thank you so much. And, and I really, you know, I love what that experience or that understanding, just that mindset shift that your family is your teacher. It's huge. And if we can all get that, uh, Carolyn Mace, who I just love, she says, you, we like to think of our angels as our best friends. Our angels are the people who give us the hardest time ever. Because then we have something to grow from and learn from. And, and whether yes. or not that's yes. actually true, it certainly helped me with my relationship 
relationship with my dad and the different challenging people in my life because I'm always looking for what's the gem here? What could I learn from here? Yes. You know? That's the big that's the big key is to stop seeing yourself as a victim or being abused or being misused and to start seeing everybody who comes into your field as having something to teach you. Mm -hmm. And the most difficult people have the most to teach you. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes it's just, sometimes it's just, just as much as creating your boundaries and saying, yeah. no, I don't need you in my life. Yeah. And other times it's more than that. I had, an, I had another, this was a personal relationship. I was working at a job as a temp for this uh, vice president and he would not communicate very well and then he would blame me. So that like really triggered my being blamed and defensiveness. And I could have left that job, I realized, because it was a temp job. Mm -hmm. But I decided that I was going to let it teach me how to not be so defensive. And when I made that decision, I went in there. I didn't worry. I said, okay, I'm going to learn not to be defensive. And the man was transferred in two weeks. Well, it's, and that's such a great, great message. Because when we change how we show up, the world changes. I mean, it's just, it's that's almost right. immediate. That's right. That's right. And um, it's like the universe is waiting for us to make the right decision. And when we make the right decision, then the universe says, oh, good. Okay, you got that. Now move on to the next one. And your intention is really powerful. You had the intention to learn from that. Boom. Yes. It, it you know, you walked back in. You said, I'm not going to take it personally. I'm going to learn. And that's, yes. a, that's a beautiful thing. So, oh, boy. So what I'd love to know is what special gift you are offering. Great. So I have this audio recording that I made. It's really great to listen to. It helps you to learn how to get in your body and start to listen and hear the messages of your body. And it's called Stress Release Body Scan. That's what it is, because right. it helps us to release the stress in our body. So it, it uh, talks you through going through all the areas of your body, the key areas where we tend to hold uh, our energy, and gives you actually signs to look for that will indicate that there's some kind of holding. And then through breathing, you actually allow that part of your body to release. Mm -hmm. And I even talked to you about how you can stop your mind so that you can stay focused on the body and release that, that energy. Mm. I love that. I love that. And, and so it's a meditation. I, did, I think it was like 14 minutes. Is that right? Yes. Or a guided journey. Okay. A guided it's journey. It's about uh, 13 minutes. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. And um, it's a guided journey in through your body. I love that. Well, and we need that. We, and sometimes we don't know what to do when there's tension. Listening and mm -hmm. tuning in and breathing into it can be a massive relief mm -hmm. for people. Thank you for that. When I think about how our work is sort of connected, I think that every single person on the planet has something, some sort of trauma or something that is hidden in their bodies. I've really not met anybody who is completely clear of that stuff. And the more you are showing up, the more you are allowing your light to shine, the more you need to clean up and clear out things that are in your way. And if you're noticing something stopping your brilliance or stopping your partnership from happening, please take Michelle up on this special gift because I think that that'll make a big difference for you. And on that note, I'm gonna wind up and I'm grateful people are here. We're gonna be meeting every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And that's when each new video will be released to get on my list to find out more about the upcoming shows and about our hosts and our guests, you can go to uh, partnership bliss 
gifts.com. You can find out more about what's happening in Conscious Couples Network world. And I send much love to you and blessings on your journey. Until next time.